Seminoles reported a sharp rise in four-year software licensing revenues. The Swiss software company also put up earnings growth and announced a plan to increase its dividend. David Arnott joins us, the CEO of the company. David, nice to see you this morning. And let me ask you about uh, how business is going, given that uh, you seem to be in the right space for all of the digitization that's taking place across economies and, and sectors. Well, thank, you, thank you, first of all, for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Business is going fantastically. We've always felt since we started Terminos 25 years ago that at some point banking would go the same way as every other industry, stop trying to write its own software and adopt packages like every other industry has done. And we finally, finally, in the last few years, seen that banks under the threat of newcomers with different technology, the Apples, the Googles, coming into the banking landscapes, the fintechs, the neobanks starting up, have, uh, have opened up the banking industry. So banks are no, no longer able to sit there on their laurels and, um, and, and run old legacy systems. So as banking changes, as banking opens up in the new era of open banking, we've been able to profit very successfully from having the world's best core banking system to sell to those banks so they can go out and compete in the new world. What's competition like though in the space? Because having been to a few tech conferences, it feels like there are a ton of players and a ton more players wanting to get into this space. So you're being disrupted by the disruptors? There's lots, of, um, there's lots of players entering the market and you can understand why. What we're going through is a once in a generation change where every, every bank, 80% of banks in the world, write their own software. They literally add to spaghetti that's been built up over 10, 20, 30, 40 years, spaghetti code. And that was okay in the, in the days when banking was so profitable that you could be inefficient and, and write your own software. You can understand that an industry that's no longer able to, be, uh, to, to write its own software and is going to need to uh, pass on cost savings through putting in packages is going to attract a lot of new players to the industry. So as an industry, wholesale over the next 10, 20 years, rips and replaces their internal IT systems, put it, puts in packages just like the manufacturers did in the 80s, 90s, just like the desktop automation did that created giants like Microsoft in the 2000s, our industry is bound to attract a lot of people. What we tend to find in the software industry is that it's a, it's a winner-takes-all market. Nobody today would try and compete with a Microsoft or an SAP or an Oracle, and that's going to happen the same. So there's a lot of small software companies coming into our space. It's a big market. There's plenty of space for lots of players, but we do believe that Temenos is the beachfront house. We're winning by far the lion's share of deals in the industry. We're growing them faster than anybody else. We're three-quarters of a billion of revenue. And software tends to be an industry that whoever's winning most the participants buy from that vendor, and that, that vendor is Temenos today. David, you're clearly in a sweet spot. I mean, looking at the uh, fourth quarter customer acquisition, 19 new customers taking, what, you up to 65 uh, for the business. Um, can that rate continue through 2018? Give us a sense of what the trends are likely to be through full year 2018. I think 2018 is going to be a very strong year for the industry, but it's part of an overall change that's going on in the industry. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing is... Overall, banks, 80% of banks write their own core software, and even the banks today that are starting to buy packages, starting to deal with huge inefficiencies, the two, 3,000 developers they have in their IT department, they're, they're maybe 3 4% of their way through the journey of, of moving towards package, uh, package software. So if you look at any other industry, they would, they would typically go and buy software to do their accounting, they would buy some desktop software, uh, and they would get on with their life, and they'd maybe spend 3% on IT. On average, banks spend 15, 16% on IT. Mm -hmm. So that was okay in the, day where, in the days when return on equity for a, for a bank was 16, 17%. Mm -hmm. Now the gloves are off. Now the financial crisis has dragged down margins in banks. Now that fintechs and the other disruptors are coming in and dragging pricing down, mm -hmm. if you're running at 5 to 6% sure. return on equity, you better do something sure, about but, it. So. But client acquisition growth, I mean, can you maintain those rates? Absolutely, absolutely. If you look today, given that the majority of banks continue to do very, very little. They're in-house developers with armies of IT people. Mm. The opportunity is absolutely massive. And okay. even in our customer base today, only 4% of the potential spend from those mm. who've yet chosen to adopt a package from Temenos is what they've got so far. So you know that in 10, 20 years, we're going to look back at an industry mm. that buys package software from where we are today. Okay. So Peter, for the audience and my ignorance, if you go to a bank, do you, just, do you start patching to begin with or do you just say, here's our new big thing, you move? How does it actually work in practice? Because it sounds naive, but... Most people won't know the answer to that, by the way. Uh, it's that's talked a, about a lot. but it's a, it's, a, it's a very insightful question. So um, there's really, if, you, if you're a bank today yep. and you're running a big ball of spaghetti code that's right. maybe been added to over the last 34 years, yep. 30 to 40 years, you've got to approach it in one of two or three ways. And there's no, there's no special way. The three ways that banks can okay. do it, one would be to, build, to stand up a brand new digital bank from scratch. Right. Many banks um, around the world, like Santander, is launching a brand new digital bank. 
um, where they put in a new modern system. They okay. feel that the time to market advantage of being able to get to market quickly with a nimble modern system that uses the analytics, right. threading through that system to, to go to market quickly is more of an imperative than changing the spaghetti as you go along. So, so new bank? Number one, yep. stand up a new bank. Yep. When you're up and running, move your books and records right. across from the old system. Okay. Number two would be progressive renovation, what we call progressive renovation, which is changing the system as you go along. You maybe change a line of business or a geography. So you might change your mortgage systems one year. Right. Uh, you okay. drive the inefficiency out of mortgages. You come along the next year and so you it's do bits and bits. You, you, you do loans, or you might do a geography. You might oh, do your private goodness. wealth. All those uh, exactly. banking consultants that we know <laughs> that live in the shires are going to remain employed. Well, exactly. Then, 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 so, so there is, rewiring the spaghetti. No one really knows this because that's always, I think, yeah. the, the issue. No one knows what it means. Everyone yeah. says fintech. Everyone says do it. Yeah. But if I'm Barclays, how do I change everything? Overnight, and that's the point. They don't. They do you it can get. The, I think you spend a great deal of money, and you well, quite. You bring in a company like uh, Temenos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it wasn't meant to be that's an Karen. Karen. It was I meant to be an innovation. I want to ask you about one of the most <laughs> aggressive players in the industry, and whether they might be going after your company. And I think you know who I'm talking about. Mm. SoftBank. I mean, the word on the street is that they want to build uh, some form of a global digital payment system that can take on the likes of uh, Apple Pay, um, China's Ali, uh, Alibaba, AliPay. Do you think SoftBank is circling and can you tell us anything about that? Okay, to be very specific on SoftBank, we've never had an approach. We're not in discussions with anybody, including SoftBank, um, and it's a, it's a market rumour. So absolutely not in any level of discussions to put that clearly back in its box. But you can understand why, why, then, why, why leaders in an industry, why anybody would want to come in and buy a company like Temenos at this stage. The industry is starting to move in a big way. For 20 years, we've felt that banks have to go the same way as every other industry in Automate. Now the industry is waking up. Now banks are faced with the comp competitors from people like the Apples, the Googles coming in, disintermediating them from their customers, trying to change the role fundamentally of a bank. You can see an industry shift happening once in a generation. And you can see why those right. want, why people will want to take part in that industry change by buying the leaders. And how committed is your major case. shareholder, Martin Lebner, who is a Swiss billionaire, is the major yes. shareholder, 14% stake, a strategic stake. How committed is he to the business and do you think he'd be willing to sell if there were to be an approach? It's not for me to speak on behalf of Martin, uh, Martin Ebner. He's an institutional investor. He has taken a long-term view, as of most of our shareholders, that this is an industry in change. Temenos has got all the hallmarks of, the, of a good software company. If you look at the world's best software companies over time, they've actually been very simple. The Oracles, the Microsofts, the SAPs, they do one thing and they do it really, really well. They do it at scale. They do it at industrial strength. We have all the hallmarks of a, of a good software company. We package our software, we make it upgradable, everybody gets exactly the same software, and as a result, we're leading the industry. So those who've taken a, a, a thesis that over time, banks will no longer be able to write their own software, recruit armies of developers, to do what is basically the same thing over and over again. You have a bank spending, we're using hundreds of people to build a mortgage system. Across the road, you have an a, a identical bank building exactly the same thing. It's a mortgage. Just buy a package and get on with it. So those who've taken a thesis that the economics of packaged software in banking apply exactly the same as they have in every, every other industry, let one or two vendors build a package and allow, allow the organizations to focus on the differentiation, the pricing, the, the risk appetite, the customer segmentation. Right. As that dynamic comes in, people like Martin Ebner and our other institutional investors have taken a view that banking is going to be a packaged software market long term right. and that Temenos is the beachfront house in that David, industry. David, thank you very much for joining us. Sounds like I'll see you at Web Summit later in the year. <laughs> David Arnott, the CEO of Temenos with us. We are counting you down to the start of the European session. Futures are flashing green this morning. We'll be right back to get you warmed up for the session.